Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock with Bible Journaling Not Made Simple this week. I'm sorry, this is not a replicable one, but it's one that I still wanted to share because the story in it is pretty special. And I'm journaling in Matthew 25, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And I kind of feel sometimes like in this passage, God put it in the Bible so that I would find it one day and realize that that was a description of me because I'm kind of a junkie for charity work. And I know for some people it's not natural, like just the whole idea of volunteering for things is is not a natural part of who they are. But for me, it always has been. You can ask my mom. Since I was young, I was always the one volunteering for something, staying after school for something. Nobody else would, but it was always me. So that that's just the way I was built and uh, have, have always worked for charities. I've run a charity, started my own, lots of different types of things. I love to donate to charities. It's one of my my secret loves is to just write checks bigger than my bank account can handle and see what God does with that. And it's just, yeah, it's just what I do. So since in the Facebook group, we were challenged to think about the talents and gifts that we have and how God has used them. I thought this would be a good one to put in here because this was a moment that I'm drawing this, this little girl this was a moment when I wasn't really doing anything where I had a gift, except for the gift of being silly. I was in Honduras, and it was many years ago, I was on a trip, and I had gotten separated on this trip with one other guy from our whole group. And we ended up on the other side of the country from where we were supposed to be. And we had to take this little tiny bus across the entire nation. And people were getting off the bus and on the bus with their animals and their groceries and whatever. This is like the normal people bus. This was not like a big greyhound, you know, going to the big city kind of bus. So we were just driving and driving and driving for many hours on this bus and we met all kinds of people. And this little girl and her mom were just two of them that we met, or at least that I met. And this little girl was clinging to her mom and looking really scared and sad and staring at me like, who is this woman, this crazy gringo? What is she doing? And I kind of signaled to them, can I take her picture? And the mom nodded, sure. And so I took her picture and I tried to show it to her and she looked at me like I was weird. So then I took a silly selfie of me with making funny faces and I showed her that. And that made her start to kind of smile a little. And then I got her doing silly selfies. And it was really fun. I mean, we just had this silly little time. And it felt like God was using my goofiness to connect me with somebody from another place. This whole trip transformed my perspective on travel. And I realized that Travel is not scary because I used to think I could never go somewhere where I don't speak the language, where I don't know how to eat the food or what to order and just so many things that, that terrified me of going to other places. But this trip opened my mind in so many ways. And this little girl was just one part of it. And I thought she would, she would be wonderful to have in my Bible in this particular passage because she's a little girl who needed something. She needed a little little kindness, a little love, a little silly laughter, and I was able to give that to her, which was very sweet. And I felt like I got so much more back from her because of it. So the medium that I've been using is Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils, and I was moving the color with baby wipes because when you use baby wipes, you don't get as much water on the page. So it makes it a little easier. I've now ironed it so it's a little flatter and I can put in my details. And I'm trying to keep the focus on her face and not on all the rest of it. And the photograph kind of cut off so I don't even have what her hand would have looked like anyway. And it had just this big shirt of her mom that she was hugging onto. But I'm going to put the text down there anyway. 
you might have seen me erase the text earlier because I had it written in pencil and I didn't want the color to mush it when it went over top of the graphite and stuff so I had erased it and to put it back now I'm just using some tracing paper to sketch out where I want my letters to start and as long as I know I can fit them on the page and they won't run off the edge that'll be good so I'm just kind of trying to see how far up I need to begin when I start writing with my real pen and I knew I wanted the I say to you right by her face and I wanted that to be a little heavier so I'm going over the letters twice then the next section is just going to be my handwriting and then the section at the bottom will have some heavier text again I probably could have dug a little deeper and tried to find my heavier micron pen but you know sometimes you just go with what you got and I had this particular pen I think it's a uh, 0.5 that I was writing with so I just went over the letters a couple times to make them thicker and then at the top I'll have that really big truly and at the very top in that purple area I can put the story I'll get out a super tiny marker and write the story of the little girl in the purple section up there and the reason that I added the purple by the way was because the page that is on the back of this when I had painted it a little bit of the color curled around the top of the page so I had just a little bit of purple hanging out up there and I tried to make it look like it was intentional instead of looking like it bled from the other side it didn't bleed through it just bled around the corner so yeah sometimes you just make things work and if you fake it nobody will know and they'll just think there was supposed to be some purple on that so um, this week I was particularly thinking of this little girl and that's probably why I'm journaling her because with all the stuff going on in current events I just have been praying for God to bring some resolution to our immigration system and God brought her to mind he wanted me to pray for a specific face this young lady would probably be in her late teens early 20s at this point since the trip that I had seen her and met her on I don't know what is going on in her life what she's doing why God wanted me to pray for her but a lot of times he uses people that I meet in other places as a proxy and if there's a natural disaster or something going on in the news he just brings those people to mind to help me to focus my prayers on real people and not just on some ideas to pray about but like what's the effect on real people so there you go my crazy page for this week I will see you again next week with one more in this month's series and then we'll start something else for the crazy world watercolor month in July I'll see you next week bye bye